Hello, welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for Kit for Cat. And joining me for this review is my good friend and fellow cat, Lou Genocide. Say hi. Well, that's a PG way to say what you really think about me. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. Released on the 6th of November, 1948. It's the 539th in the series and it's directed by Frizz Freeling. You can currently find this cartoon on the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 1 DVD set. So tell me, what is this cartoon all about, Blue? It's freezing outside, and Sylvester decides to play up to Elmer's sympathies to let him stay at his home for the night. However, a cute little kitten decides to do the same, and Elmer decides that he will think about which cat he will end up keeping. So, of course, Sylvester decides to tip the scales in his favor, but it's not long before the kitten has other ideas. And it's uh, an interesting one, but let's go through a few of bits of trivia uh, before we discuss the cartoon itself. So, firstly, the title itself, which is actually a bad title for this particular short, because I keep forgetting what on earth is this short until I actually watch it. Can I be honest? When you told me the name of this short that we were doing, I have seen this one quite a bit, but I thought that this was going to be the one where Sylvester tries to get into cat food and the uh, mouse has the only can opener, but that's canned food. Yeah, well. <laughs> or feud or whatever it is. See, that one actually has a good title. This one, yeah. It's, it, this one is just a pun, and it's a pun for the term tit for tat, which is also the title of a great Lauren Hardy film, so at least it reminded me to go and watch that again, which is always a good thing. You can never have too much Lauren Hardy in your life. Now, there is some reused animation, in the very beginning, when Sylvester's at the trash cans or garbage cans, whichever you want to call it, yeah, that's reused from Life with Feathers. As you can see in one brief moment, you can see Pratt's cocktail sherry. So that's, of course, Sir Holy Pratt. That's the layout artist for this particular cartoon. And lastly, that radio show, that wonderful radio show. Melvin, what are you going to do with that gun, Melvin? <laughs> I'm going to kill you, Beatrice. Do you hear? Kill you! So you've got Bia Benaderet and Mel Blanc doing this, well, I guess, stereotypical radio show that you would have heard around this time, or perhaps older, and it's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious, and they even refer to each other as Melvin and Beatrice, and honestly, it sounds off script, it sounds like they were just told, you know what, make up some stereotypical chase radio thing and, and go with it, because, but... Hey, I think it's hilarious. I mean, what did you think of that video show? Oh, the radio show is a perfect little background to the uh, cartoon. I really do love that, how the roles reverse, and it, it's just really good. And, and of course, you, you can never get enough of Mel's laugh, you know, the whole, you know, that, that the, he can do so many different evil laughs. It's just hilarious what he, what he does. But, I mean, Babia as well, she she was a wonderful talent um, as well. Just the way that she, <laughs> she had like a scared woman, but then, Table, as you say, the tables turn, and yeah, she's now after him. It's, it's it's incredible. So, a few bits that I want to go through in this cartoon. I mean, first of all, I love this one, and again, I have to bring it up again because of the awful title. I keep forgetting about this one, but once I actually do see it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's this one. This is a really really funny one, and you know, it's got so many great little touches in it, like the Sylvester's kicking the kitten out of the way in the beginning. Cats. I'd like to have a cat around the house, all right, but I can keep both of you. The baby yeah. Sylvester. What a ridiculous way for a grown-up cat to behave. At your age. I mean, how great is that baby Sylvester? And Helmer's just not too pleased. Is my, my favorite gag in the cartoon is the bit where Sylvester tries to frame the kitten for breaking the bottle of milk open. And Elmer gives the kitten a bunch of food and he keeps hitting his head as he watches the cat, the kitten get more and more food. That? Oh, poor little fellow. You must be starved. How neglectful of me. Here, have some nice milk. And some delicious cheese, and hamburger, and pickled herring, and smoked barracuda, and salami, and Yeah, you know, and I even like the little, you got the kitten being a kitten. He's actually playing with Sylvester's tail, and that's what, what the kittens would usually do. I thought that was a great little touch. 
you know, you don't even have to do that, but it's in there and it's it's great. But can we just also appreciate the hypnotism gag? I mean, how good is like on the head, on the head? <laughs> I admit, Alma give, is giving the two cat maybe too many times to not stuff up. And what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that it took more than one time for Sylvester to not get kicked out. Like I thought. Like, I mean, if I saw a cat deliberately breaking all my dishes, I think that would be enough for me to, like, boot it outside, at least for the night. (laughs) Exactly right. But you actually pointed out to me before we started recording that this is actually very similar to an earlier Freeze Frilling cartoon. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's a similar idea. I mean, which, which cartoon is that one? I can't believe I actually remember the name of this one. And believe it or not, I did because I said it out loud. Hair Force. And which one is that one again? Because, again, it's a stupid name, but oh, for, for actually yeah. a good cartoon. Freeling is probably the worst with the titles, just being bad puns, but Hair Force is the one where Bugs is outside in the cold, just like Sylvester is at the beginning of this cartoon, where an old lady discovers Bugs at the, her porch, and the dog that's living there already isn't too happy, and they both try to get each other kicked out. It's not the same cartoon because obviously both the kitten and Sylvester are both in the same situation at the beginning of the cartoon, but it's a very similar premise. Exactly. Exactly right. No, I I do agree with you. Although are some ideas reused, perhaps, but at least with Frizz, if he does reuse something, he usually improves on it. And that's that's what I like about his cartoon. I mean, out, out of those two, I still prefer Kid for Cat. But mm-hmm. that's just me. I mean, what, what do you think? Which is better, Kid for Cat or Hair Force? See, that's a situation I really, I really don't want to pick between either of them. I really like both of them. So they're both really good. I, I just, you know, it would depend on my mood. I think most people would say that Kid for Cat is the better cartoon. And I can totally understand that. Yeah, for sure. But we also got to appreciate the, the fantastic ending to this short. I mean, it, it makes this short go from really good, and I mean really, really good, to fantastic. And it's just a big punch right at the end where Elmer, of course, gets evicted as well. I've made up my mind who's weaving these premises. Oh, no, you haven't. I've made up my mind. But you'd have to wonder, though, if he's being evicted now, maybe he's been in trouble before because usually you wouldn't get evicted on your first offense, I would think. But Well, yeah. if you're constantly letting animals in your house to smash everything that you own, I guess you would have a little bit of trouble paying your rent. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. But we won't delve into it. Otherwise, we'll be here all day into that theory. But just to slowly wind this one up, though... What would you rate this one? Because for me, this is a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think it's hilarious from start to finish. Great animation, great story, and great punchline at the end. What what, what would you rate this one? You know what? I I think I'm about on the same level with you on this one. I think it's 8.5 out of 10. I I think that's a fair assessment for this cartoon. Then it's a wonderful cartoon indeed, and I'm sure a a lot of people will end up agreeing with that. I mean, whether you agree with us or not, you know, let us know in the comments below. And yeah, as this, that's another one all done. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, take care.